Abrami and today we are at GNA Beers in London and we're back for another episode of Women in Classical. In front of me I have the wonderful violinist Jennifer Pike. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, it's <laughs> lovely to be here. Um, so we've got quite a few things in common and I, both of us are violinists but also both of us have studied at the same school, Cheatham School of yes. Music. Yeah. I remember those days. So so long ago now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember. Um, so we didn't go to school at the same time, but I remember because you won BBC Young Musician of the Year at was it twelve years old yes, or ten? That's maybe. right. No, twelve. Twelve. 12. Yes. Very impressive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember seeing yeah your portrait. It was really inspiring and kind of always looked up to you. Um, since that, that day when I kind of got to know about you. Oh, um, so it's wonderful to you. have you in person. It's lovely. Well, no, it's, I'm very, it's flat, very flattered. That's the word I'm after. Very flattered to be asked. It's lovely to see you again. I'd like to start off by asking about your beginnings um, and how did you get into music and why did you choose music as a career? That's a really good question because it's it's a hard one. Why did I choose it? Because in a funny sort of way with music, it it, it sounds a cliche, but it, it chose me. me. I'm sure everyone <laughs> says that. But it, it, it's that's what happens with music. It's just it, when it gets hold of you. I mean, that's what happened to me. I, I don't really remember a specific moment where I thought this is going to be my career. I want it to, you know, I want to pursue this as a as a as a job. It's mm. a funny words to apply to music. Um, but of course, um, it is work, and we're at the moment fighting to say yes, music is work. Yeah. But back then, I remember just that, um, just getting the bug really, listening to a, a CD of Mozart piano concertos, I think it was, and I just remember hearing those for the first time, and uh, the life and energy in the music, and it made me want to dance. You know, this just made me want to move. It, it filled me with joy, yeah. and I think that is what. I just realized I want to do this for my whole life and uh, um, and so then it was just a natural progression um, into doing it and then suddenly I realized oh actually I'm, this is how I'm paying the bills which is a really strange concept um, and it, it was a very uh, young age that I got into it so all of these things were yeah. Very kind of unusual and uh, yeah. Yeah, because you so obviously you won the the BBC Young Musician competition so so young and that. I'm, Obviously, that opened, I'm sure, yes. suddenly a lot of doors. How did you feel about, you know, how about that yes. at such a young, such a young age? Um, that was wonderful and challenging. It was yeah, pros and cons. Um, I think that is a fantastic com competition because it treats people, uh, treats the musicians not like they are competitors. Yeah more that it's like a concert environment mm. and I think that is the key to the, that particular competition success because it really looks after um, the people involved and I felt that, I really um, appreciated that so much um, and I think without that it would have, it would be a, a disastrous thing in a way um, for young people to go into because it's, it's a very, it could be a pressured environment yeah. and cameras in your face, you know. Um, and then the difficulties of what happens after, um, you all know, the engagements that are coming yeah, exactly. straight after, and you know, interviews and what, what you know, uh, people wanting to find out about you at yeah. an age that is, you really don't want to be thinking about that stuff. Um, so I did feel that it, they supported me yeah. in that, and I do, I'm grateful to them. And so I, I look at it as a stepping stone now, a vital one. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, but there were many, many challenges still, of course. Yeah, um, sure. So, and I think that's that's something I could talk all day about. Yeah, we're going to come. We are going to come to that actually. Um, I mean, we've obviously mentioned one, which is the winning that competition. But what in what do you feel has been kind of your biggest highlights in your career? Ah, biggest highlights. I think a really special moment must be 
looking back, being in the middle of the Albert Hall, surrounded by promise. I was 15 and I was playing solo Bach and violin day at the proms wow. and opening the whole thing. So I just had to go out into this, what seemed like a boxing ring. It looked like a boxing <laughs> ring. I was like, where are my gloves? <laughs> I have only a violin in my hand. Um, so that, the, I just remember this adrenaline and the thrill. So going in, to that hall and, and hearing um, the acoustic of the hall in the middle was, was really wonderful. Um, I think that's a very special highlight. But more recently, I think doing, um, doing these protests at the moment, just I, actually just a few days ago in, in Trafalgar Square, we did this um, flash mob where you know, 200 plus musicians got together and uh, played Ukrainian music um, to the square. and. Uh, and just in solidarity with what's going on um, and just to show Ukrainians that we're, we are there and wanted to inspire, um, galvanise support for the DEC humanitarian appeal. So that, just the atmosphere in the square and uh, we had Peter Limanov who's Russian conducting it, getting very emotional. Um, so that, I have to say, was one of the most special experiences um, and emotional experiences, I think. I've yeah. had my time playing. Yeah. I saw the videos. It was yeah, yeah. very emotional, very strong. Mm. Um, and um, so I'll come to the next question, which is uh, we touched on, which is challenges. Um, oh yes. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> again, um, I mean, I mean, you mentioned it, and you know, obviously we all go through a lot. Um, I think within music, it's already quite. A it can be a challenging career, yeah. um, but also I think, um, especially as women in the industry, there's also that comes with all its challenges as well. Yes. Kind of add-on challenges. Um, so I'd love to hear your view, well, your side on how, you know what for you were the biggest challenges and how do you overcome them? How do you face them? And how kind of you know? <laughs> yes, oh, the most important question, absolutely. Um, I, I think. Looking back, when I was I was just looking back over the years, thinking, what could I pick out that's <laughs> that is, <laughs> you know, a definitive thing that could perhaps help other women as well, and in talking about it, would be I think the environment of being a woman in classical music can be really challenging and tough, especially. Uh, for a young person going into it, because if you look at a concerto scenario, for instance, going out onto the stage, you're working with people often a lot older than you. Yeah. Well, I was at the time, it doesn't feel like it anymore. <laughs> um, and, and also really male dominated with conductors. Yeah. I mean, I can count on one hand yeah. women I've worked with um, yeah. conducting, which is shocking over a period of 20 years. Yeah. 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 Awful, awful yeah. thing to think. And, um, and, you know, and, and the audience as well, of course. Uh, I, I've looked out into the audience at a particular cross section of society as well. So it's a huge, hugely kind of mind boggling um, challenges that we face. But the working with the conductor, I think if I were to zoom in on yeah. one particular thing, just for the purpose of this interview, um, just to have an awareness that, I mean, there's a great pressure on women to you know, you've got to allow women the space, a safe space to promote their opinion, to, to give them a moment to be listened to. Yeah. And I find that that has been lacking over the period of 20 years that I've been doing it. It's to such an extent that I felt really um, kind of oppressed by it. And it's not all, not all men, by yeah. no means. Yeah. But it's just this idea that a woman, a woman cannot have an opinion somehow or it's disruptive to be showing confidence yeah um in a rehearsal scenario for instance i've had to tiptoe around um you know if i've got an idea about something and i want to want to put this idea across i have felt sometimes it, it's really difficult to say something and and not not to be talked over or just because it's we, we don't have a loud voice yeah um you know that that is something that oh well we won't listen to her because she's you know this big and yeah. it's got a small <laughs> voice you know and uh, so that that has to change and it is changing 
But also I'd like to add on to that, that there is a great pressure on many men in the industry to appear confident, to appear in control of a yeah. quite a scary environment. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, if you think of, you know, conductors being in control of this huge orchestra on stage um, with time pressures um, and in society, I feel that, you know, men have got this pressure to, to seem seem big, seem the one in control, seem the one with the dominant characteristics, because that's what we all expect, you know. So I think actually the, it's also recognising those pressures on men too, which actually there's so many more qualities in leadership, like listening, yeah. um, collaboration, that's the key word really. Um, so I, I just, I, I'm, I'm happier things are changing, I feel it changing, um, you know, even when I'm in a rehearsal, but I, yeah, a great challenge. I, I do remember when I was actually I'm going on and on about it. No, it's, it's, really, no, it's so interesting. It's <laughs> really, really is. But I do remember in my early 20s um, saying something um, to a conductor who will remain nameless and um, and just getting this feeling that it was, you know, sh it just shut me down, you know, very charming behind the scenes. Mm. Of course, you know, I will collaborate on this idea. When it got to the rehearsal, it it's got to be way. this way. Yeah. And that's not how music should work. It should be collaborative. And uh, I kind of thought to myself, oh, OK, I'm really rocking the boat, so I will not say anything. Yeah. And then I, for a few years after that, I wouldn't say anything in rehearsals. Yeah. And then somebody said, when I mentioned this experience, they said, God, that's awful. You know, you, yeah. you shouldn't feel yeah. like that. Yeah. So I, I'm now looking back and I think I wish somebody had just said, you know, just be yourself. Just, it doesn't yeah. matter what people think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank yeah. God that's changed now. But I, I, I see that and it's, it can be, as you said, there's obviously the, also the age gap. Often you, you come in and you're, yeah. you're being quite young, as you said, and you, you feel small. And it's that thing yeah. of coming in, even at that first rehearsal and, you know, trying to find your space trying yes. to to have enough space and yeah. kind of and not be like you exactly. sat there in your corner trying Definitely. and it's very hard it's very very hard i mean just to to find that safety you, you've really got to feel safe and it's wonderful when an orchestra and conductor and audience welcomes you it's very important i think yeah. because then everyone can have the benefit of of your uh, feeling of comfort because then you feel free to express yeah. so um, so we I think we do have been battling a lot of these <laughs> extra things that shouldn't be it, it really shouldn't be the case you should be free to completely create and then um, actually I, one thing I will add on to that is the joy of music because that's in a way where we can feel free yeah. we don't have anyone saying you've got to do it this way or that way when you're on stage mm. And you're not using your voice, so although there'll be a time where that's <laughs> even more acceptable, to be playing, to be heard yeah. with a violin mm -mm. Um, is very freeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the most wonderful things. Um, I'm sure you feel the same Absolutely. when you're on stage. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's very interesting to hear. And I think it can, uh, I think a lot of um, people can relate to that, actually, that mm -hmm. feeling of, um, and I think it can even apply to, you know, um, even other situation within within music, I think it is generally um, quite yeah, still quite male dominated, and and also with older older generations. So having that that feeling of yeah, coming in or into a room sometimes, and mm. you know, and so yeah, exactly yeah, everyone is e equal in in music somehow. It should feel like that. Yeah. Um, my next question um, is about. Um, figures, women figures who have inspired you um, and that can be in music or in your family or literally anyone yes, around you. Or... Apart from yourself, <laughs> <are> very inspiring. <laughs> um, lots of people, yeah, my, um, my sister is a great inspiration to me. Um, older or younger? She's three years older than me and, um, and she's a doctor so over this whole pandemic she's just working mm -hmm. flat out and uh, I just I've just got so much awe, um, in awe of these people. Um, and my, my grandma in Poland as well, uh, a neurologist, uh, she's like 84 or something, and she's still working. Wow. She's still, still working. <laughs> and we're, we're all kind of amazed, uh, <laughs> really. She's just like this power lady. She's so tiny, but she's... <laughs> um, that's within the family. Um, and then 
Oh, Mentor-wise, uh, Professor Susan Wallenberg, my tutor at Oxford, um, I went for three years to study music there, and she opened my eyes to music in a whole uh, new way, a wonderful world um, opened up by her. And she was teaching us all about uh, composers, about women uh, in music, and um, actually a lot of recordings I've made mm. of, of like women composers. Um, it's thanks to her because oh, she said, yeah. "How about this piece? Look at this piece. What do you think?" And um, so, yeah, Professor Susan Wallenberg is a lot, a lot of inspiration due to her. Last question, favorite question of mine uh, to ask uh, all the guests that I have. Um, what do you wish to have known um, when you were going into the music industry? And is there one advice that you could share and that you think could help uh, younger girls uh, coming in today in the, in the industry? Yes, um, that would be instinct. Trust your instinct. I wish I had that embroidered you know, in the bathroom somewhere on something that would look at all the time. It's so important to trust your instinct. Um, I think there can be a lot of voices, a lot of people telling you what they want you yeah. to be. Um, and you know it deep inside of you if you feel comfortable, even before consciously you've come up with um, you know, your idea of, yes, I'll do this or no. This feeling inside you arrives instantly. And I think always trust that. And um, even if it seems like a scary thing to do, um, I think that that's the most important thing. The number of times I've uh, done something and I, I realized I wish I hadn't Shouldn't, done yeah. that because I felt uncomfortable at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then others that I, again, I thought, yeah, I had that feeling I could do something like that. I could do this. And then I've let voices kind of dampen me down and just yeah. thought, you know, actually it's, being fearful of something can be a good thing and it can make you fly if yeah. you go for it. So instinct is very important. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 great advice. Um I I think it can be very hard. I, I feel exactly the same way. I mentioned it in an earlier interview actually about the the fact that it's it's really hard to um when especially when you're kind of going through your music study. I found that at music college um because it, it often feels like the, the image that people have of you is you know you should adapt to that and this is what you are and this is what you're going to become yeah. but it's yeah, not that it's, it's only you in control yeah. yeah absolutely there are so many especially even if you've taken one decision yeah. and you've gone with something then they think ah those are the decisions she makes therefore we'll make her into this yeah this is what she means yeah. this e yeah. she equals that yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, no <laughs> that's just one moment you know? yeah yeah, not to be put in a box. Oh, it's a constant struggle, I that think, is in every a big struggle. profession. I yeah. think, yeah, absolutely. I think there's the struggle, obviously, of, as you said, even personality-wise and look-wise, and especially as a yeah. woman, again, yes. you know, um, you know, you're going to... Oh, that's her look, that's, that's hair, yeah. that's hair, you know, and exactly. you don't, know. don't step out. That's her file, this <laughs> yeah. is who she is. <laughs> it's really frustrating, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, wearing what you want to wear, that's so important, you know, being comfortable in yourself. And also you change as a person. Exactly. And I feel like that's not really taken yeah. in consideration. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. And I mean, obviously with technology and things being filmed and yeah. moments being kind of replayed, and that is only just one moment. Yeah. And then you could want to change and be something else in the yeah. next. Um, absolutely. Not letting those things stifle your yeah. journey. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was for really inspiring. Me. It's inspiring. Um, I loved you. everything that you said. Really, really <laughs> was enlightening and inspiring. So thank you. So thank much. you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>